Okay, so good morning class, how are we today? Right. Right, okay, so today we're going to continue our work on our state of mind. And today we'll actually be looking at how energy interacts in changing our states. So, first of all, can anyone remember our three states of matter from last lesson? Wait. Uh, solid. Solid. Excellent. So, what's an example of a solid? Uh, brick. Brick. Excellent. All right. What's another state of matter? Uh, liquid. Liquid. Excellent. So, an example of liquid? Water? Water. Right. We'll be looking at water quite a lot today. <laughs> yes, and the final state of matter? Gas. Gas. Excellent. And the example of gas? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so last lesson we covered the three states of matter. And do you guys remember the definitions of why something's a solid, why something's a liquid, why we call something a gas? So first of all, let's start with solid. How can we say that something is a solid? By some of the properties it has. By some of the properties, definitely. So what are some of those properties of solids? As a set shape. As a set shape. Excellent. Now, with that set shape, what uh what is it actually made up of? What would that solid be made up of? Um, atoms. Atoms. Excellent. They're an example of matter. Of matter. Excellent. Okay, what about a liquid? How could we how do we define liquid in the last one? Liquid can be um, like the molecules of the matter are more separated, more free. Yep, more free, definitely. What about when they're in a container? So think about when we put a block of ice into a glass. Yeah. That sort of holds its shape, but what would happen if we put liquid water into a glass? You take the shape of the container. Excellent. That's exactly what we said. Take the shape of the container. Now, could that also apply to a gas? Perhaps. So, if we had, let's say, air in the tank, would that be taking its shape of the container? So how can we differentiate between, how can we tell the difference between the liquid and the gas if they can both take the shape of the container? What did we say? The liquid will do something in that container that the gas won't. Excellent. So brilliant. So that's exactly what we covered in the last two lessons. So now we're going to be looking at how these different states of matter we can actually change between each of them. So thinking about our example of water, what can water be when it's a solid? Ice. Ice. Excellent. Then obviously the liquid is liquid water. And what do we call water as a gas? Vapor. Vapor. Brilliant. So obviously, this is what, sorry, not obviously, so it has the water undertaking any chemical change. Has it changed its structure? Is it a different compound? Is it still the same molecule? Exactly, it's still the same molecule, but what do we think may have impacted on it? What's different about it? Uh, the arrangement of the water molecule. Yeah, and there might be something in there that has brought about a change in that arrangement. So we're going to have a go at one of our cahoots again. And this is where we'll explore it, okay? So if you could all go to cahoots.it for me. <laughs> okay, so just 
as usual for your name, make sure it's your first name and your last initial. Quickly, and then 
the shape that they were uh, uh, in the race, they start to, to move from the stage into the liquid stage. Exactly. So, obviously, anyone who's gone to the movie has a nice big cup of coke, filled it up nice and nice. You're in there for two hours. <laughs> There's no more ice. So, even just that little bit of heat from the atmosphere can give extra energy to those molecules, which can change their state. So we're going to look a little bit more now at changes of state, and we're going to think about it in terms of energy. So obviously, heat energy is playing a huge part of this, so I want you to really try and think about how energy could be affecting these next couple of processes. So when a substance is changing from a solid, like ice, to a liquid, does it gain energy or does it lose energy? So here we've got our nice glass of ice cubes, and this is a little spell out um, video of it. And so you can see just around the edges here, so we're starting to get water to form rather than ice. So I want you to think, if this is going from a solid to a liquid, and as they've observed, the heat energy from the atmosphere is impacting on it, do you think that substance is getting more energy into it, or is it actually releasing it? So select the appropriate color when you think you have an error. Alright, so everyone's gone for the substance gains and so I want to have a go explaining why they think that's the case. Um, okay. So the 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 Excellent. That's a great use of particles as well. Because remember, all matter. Doesn't matter if the Solid, liquid, or gas is all made of those little tiny particles, little molecules, and those can absorb energy or release energy. So when we've gone from that solid to a liquid, you think about it in the way of when something gets more mobile. So when you guys are sitting down, it's not very mobile. Not a lot of energy being used. Very still. Whereas the second you start up moving around, you start to use energy. So you've built more energy into the way you're moving more and more. Okay, so in that case, we're going from a solid to a liquid and it's gaining energy. Thinking about the reverse now. So when a substance changes from a liquid, so it's already liquid, it's already fluid, it's already moving to a solid. Would we be would the substance be gaining in energy? Or would we be losing energy? Okay, so we've got a bit of a different sort of stroke here. So, who answered the substance gain energy? Yep. And why, what made you think that? Okay, so the, when they come together, they're sort of storing energy when they come together. Is that sort of the wide reason? Okay. What about that um, place? Like the elimination said it loses energy. Yeah. So, <laughs> have, why do you, what is your explanation for that? Why do you think that it's lost energy to come from? Uh, well, liquid has more energy than solid for air moving around, so when it's moving back, and changing back into a solid, it's not moving as much, so it doesn't have so much kinetic energy in the particles. Okay, so if it's if it's losing its energy, where does that go? What, is it all of a sudden disappeared? Or is there some transfer, uh, just like a transfer process? Yeah, I would go to the surrounding. 
get the, the more particles around it. Perhaps. Yeah, into the glass particles and the particles that are in contact with. Excellent. So that's what's happening there. And in particular, when we have refrigeration, the way the refrigeration works is you're pumping through more and more air particles, and those are picking up the energy from a substance. That's why we put trays water into your freezer, it'll come out as ice, so it's pumping through more and more air, more and more low energy air, so it's picking up all the energy out of that water. So now if we've thought about energy, we should be able to think about this. So now if we've got the liquid, for example, so we've gone from solid to liquid, where we've had more energy being transferred. What will happen if we take that liquid, that liquid water, put it over a Bunsen burner, and leave that indefinitely? Correct. What do you think will happen? Okay, so we're all in agreement then. The water will increase in temperature and change into a gas. Is there anything else that will further step or a name of a process to think of that is occurring as well? Yeah, when you are applying the heat to the mountain, the moisture of the water starts to make the substance changing. And then the start so molecules will start to take in the form of that. Yeah, excellent. So if we as those molecules breaking away, becoming gas, going away from the water, what's going to be left in the bunsen burner? It's just going away, going away, there's no more, all the gas is going out. What's going to happen is they'll be left a small cup boiling for five hours. Will we have anything left? No? No? I don't think we would either. And what, does anyone know the name of that process? Evaporation. Evaporation. Excellent. So in our next lesson, we'll be further going into looking at those specific processes of evaporation, melting, etc. But just for now, I want you guys to have a look at this video. I want you to try and make a prediction or work out what's actually going on. So I want you to tell me the state of matter that the boiling water has changed into. Let's see. What else is out? Okay. This is from this, and this is about minus 21. So I still can't get the place saying um, somewhere in Russia. Two chances. One of them. I would say. So he's just boiled a big pot of water, steaming hot, so you can see. Now he's walking out onto his mountain, and he's going to lob it off his, I believe, his eight story mountain. Big white plume. So boiling off 100 degrees or thereabouts. It's just come off the stove. It's as hot as water can be. You can see the water vapor coming off, gas coming off. But when he's thrown it out there, what state of matter has it become? What state of matter is that big plume that we saw there? Ooh, okay. So we've all gone to solid. Interesting. Do you want to say why is that made the code? Why we think it's solid? Did it change into the code? Possibly. Does anyone else? You may want to try to explain the full process behind why they thought it turned into a solid. So if it's at 100 degrees, it's got a lot of energy, and then it's going straight out into minus 41. So it's 10 times colder, or 3 or 4 times colder, sorry, than your home freezer. So what's that process? 
extremely primitive and successful. So what's happening to those parties? Excellent. So they're losing heat with the five holes. Yeah, so it's fine. So then, so as that water is going out and getting attacked by all those air molecules, it's taking away all the heat. We do enough of those tiny little solids. So, very well done. All of you got solids. I'm just trying to test you to see if any of you have changed your mind. But no, really well done. So, that's it for the lesson today, guys. I look forward to seeing you next Monday.